This game is basically a kung fu ripoff in all the right ways. I'm all for it. They put 7th Guest on the Nintendo Switch? And nobody told me? A game that just may help you learn Japanese along the way. A pretty nice Metroidvania that I think everyone should check out. And so many more Switch games on this video that I think you should be checking out right about now. We got 10 Switch games. This is my Nintendo Switch. It is my travel system of choice. I use the fixture grip with my face on it. You can check out a link in the description if you want to grab one for yourself. Uh, but with all these conventions coming up, I gotta have something to play, man. So whether you're on the go or just chilling at home, check out these 10 Nintendo Switch games. I mean, just how cool is that? As soon as I saw this opening scene, I was like, yep, this is already right up my alley. Xiaomei, I believe is how it's pronounced, and the Flame Dragon's Fist. Call it whatever you want. Saying this is a Kung Fu clone would be too polite. It is a blatant ripoff, and I'm all for it. You know, and maybe if you're into PC Engine CD like I am, it kind of reminds me a little bit of the Ranma One Half game as well, just a little bit. But like Kung Fu, you just scroll along, you got your punch, you got your kick, you can also jump kick and jump punch, a little uppercut kind of thing too. And you make your way to the end of the stage to battle the boss. And that's really what this game's all about. It has that NES difficulty. It's pretty difficult, even on easy. Uh, I mean, I tried it on medium at first, and I was like, no, okay, better, I better, I better, I better scale it back to easy, <laughs> just to help me out a little bit. But always a pattern with the bosses, and uh, just a fun, fun thing to see, fun, fun game to play. Uh, I, I'm so happy that uh, they have a game like this, and I'd love to see more games like this on the Switch. Seventh Guest returns to a Nintendo system. Well, I understand it was for the Philips CDI, but I'll explain here in just a moment. Now, I don't know if they made any other iterations of Seventh Guest on other, like on, on mobile or anything like that, but when I played Seventh Guest on the CDI, this is what it looked like to me when I played it on the CDI. You walk around, there's these kind of like, and even just like the visual effects were kind of cool, kind of creepy at the time, you know? It's a puzzle game, and there's a few games like this on the CDI, on the Sega CD, this one's Seventh Guest, and this one's heralded as one of the better ones, from what I understand. At least it was for me, for sure. And different rooms might have different puzzles to unlock, and you don't really know what you're doing with the puzzles, but after you just kind of look around and click around a little bit, you kind of understand, you kind of get it after a little bit. You're like, oh, okay, I, I, I get how to solve this puzzle. And then you might even be treated to more storyline to find out what's going on in Seventh Guest. That's right. Now I say it again on a Nintendo system, uh, the reason is, and I learned this from Chris Kohler, um, and I, I, I take his word for everything because I think he's great. Now, although 7th Guest was for the Philips CDI, Philips CDI had that special arrangement with Nintendo at the time. That's why they had the Hotel Mario, it's why they had the Zelda games on the CDI. So this game, in a roundabout way, I don't not licensed, but was kind of in agreement with Nintendo, it's why you never saw 7th Guest on the Sega Saturn. It's why you never saw 7th Guest on the PlayStation 1. Yeah, it's why you never saw 7th Guest on the Turbo Duo. But you'll find it here on the Nintendo Switch, and I'm all for it. And after playing something like that, you're gonna need a bite to eat. And with that, I gotta give a shout out to today's video sponsor, Magic Spoon. We did it. Magic Spoon. The gluten-free, grain-free, never boring cereal you won't believe only has zero grams of sugar. That's right, it only has zero grams. I mean, just because you're rocking that low-carb lifestyle doesn't mean you need to sacrifice your favorite food. I know I'm not. I mean, come on, it's cereal. It's perfect for those late night snacking, Saturday mornings, hey, even after a workout or something like that. I'm trying to get back in shape. And with like 13 grams of protein, this one's 14 grams of protein, I'd just rather have a bowl of cereal than like anything else. Now my personal favorite is the frosted one, but I've really been enjoying this uh, peanut butter one recently. Same flavor, same crunch, those feel-good nostalgic vibes. It's all in here with Magic Spoon. Listen to this. Listen to this. That was probably too big of a bite for me. It also stays crunchy in milk for a long, long time. Super important. Uh, let me show you the variety pack here. Hold on. Let's see if I can figure this out here. This is the variety pack. We got fruity and cocoa and frosted and peanut butter. The peanut butter one's on top. Okay. So this is the variety pack and this is the nice one to grab because you get a little, little bit of everything. Chocolate and fruit and peanut butter and again that frosted one I really like. I mean they're all good. Ooh. Check out the link below magicspoon.com slash rigs. Use my promo code rigs. You'll save five bucks on your order. And if it's not for you, they'll actually give you your money back. You got nothing to lose. Click my link below, promo code RIGS, $5 off of your Magic Spoon cereal. Which is fantastic news for you because the next Switch game on this list 
costs $4.99. You can use that money to buy this game. Here's Paper Triss. Now, when I first looked at Paper Triss for a moment, I was like, oh, this is nothing like Tetris. It's a little bit more like Columns. And that's when the company reached out to me saying, well, you know, we never said it was Tetris. You said that. It's Paper Triss because it's like paper graphics, right? And Triss meaning three. Tree. There's three pieces. I was like, well, okay, I, I, I guess I put that in my own head. <laughs> it's fine. And you know what? It's, it's a fine game, too. It is, it's, a, it's a match three, but not diagonally, but so long as the three of them are connected. So even if you have, like, you know, uh, kind of at a 90 degree angle, you know, two and then one on top of one of the two, that counts as three. And then the different levels have different kinds of puzzles. Like one of them might be, you know, clear, uh, clear out 50 purple blocks to move it on to the next stage. And then, then the next one might be, you know, like do 25 of this, 25 of that, 25 of this other one, you know, stuff like that. So uh, nice, simple, easy flowing puzzle game, nice and relaxing as far as puzzle games go. And again, cheap, $4.99, can't go wrong. It's another game I love playing on flights, just a little time killer. Missed the title screen on this one, but here's Kana Quest. Kana Quest. I was hoping for something a little bit different, but I'm still pleasantly surprised with how this game worked, and I'll explain that along the way as well, too. It is a tile sliding puzzle game that shows you either hiragana or katakana, as far as the Japanese, uh, you know, um, written, written word goes. Katakana or hiragana, um, same alphabet, just different character, different looking characters. And with the tiles sliding, you have to slide them next to their kind of friend, in a way. <laughs> Either by matching the same first letter sound, or matching the same second letter sound. If that makes sense. And when you make a trail of them so they're all connected, that's when you can move on to the next stage. And there are some pieces that don't move at all. There are some pieces that you don't know what they are yet, but by sliding tiles around, say, oh, well, it connects to these two or three you can figure out what the letter is supposed to be, and then you can unlock it to, to move on to the next stage too. I was kind of hoping that it would be more of a slide the characters together to form a word to move on to the next stage, or that kind of puzzle thing. This one was just like the letter sounds. It could have been shapes and colors. It didn't have to be katakana or hiragana, but I'm kind of glad it is because it's still, either way, it's still a fun puzzle game and I'm glad to be checking it out here. Curse of the Sea Rats. This is this is a great game here. Um, I've played it only a little bit so far, and I'm almost kind of waiting to play it longer, like on my next like long flight, so I can like really put some time into this. Great uh, animation here. Great looking, um, you know, great looking style here for something like this. Uh, as a word, you can uh, choose which hero to start out with here. Which one do you want to play as? Different ones have different abilities or different fighting styles, I suppose. And Metroidvania, to its core. You have a map and everything. You pick up items and upgrades and everything. You got your checkpoints. You got your areas to, you know, teleport, you know, across to the other side of the map and everything like that, too. And it just looks really, really cool. I really, really dig this art style. And I liked what I've played of it so far. Again, I haven't played it much because I'm kind of holding off a little bit. But I definitely wanted to bring it to your attention because it's a game that I think I'm going to really enjoy. And I, th I think you're going to enjoy it, too. Doodle World Deluxe, I love seeing my uh, indie guys, my NES homebrew guys uh, get some extra love here. And when one of their games comes on the Nintendo Switch, it's definitely worth celebrating. Uh, Doodle World has always been one that's kind of got high praise from the Nintendo homebrew community. I remember checking this game out early on and being like, okay, this is, this is going to be a good one here. This is going to be a good one. Uh, the character looks like that because that is uh, the guy who made this game's daughter's original design. You can see it off to the side there. Uh, literally drew a character and then he put that as the playable character in this game. Literally a doodle. And just like my NES game is now on Switch, now this game is now on Switch. And there might be other NES homebrews available on Switch too. Nami Tinto is the one to do it. So if, you, uh, if you're if you an indie homebrew, like Nintendo homebrew developer, and you have a game and you want it to be on the Nintendo Switch, um, you know, uh, hit me up. I'll, I'll point you in the right direction. A few other options too, you know, while you're playing this game, you know, different styles, different lookings, um, but cool to see. I, I love the fact that it's on here. Definitely got to give it a shout out. Here's a game called Push XL. I believe it's called Push XL. Is that how you say it? Push XL? Yeah, almost like a reverse metronome here. It kind of goes left and right, and as soon as you hit your button, you get that little boost. And the more that meter's filled up, the farther you go. And it's all about how far can you go? How far can you go? How far can you go? So far, so simple, so fun. I like games like this. These are the kind of games I like having on my Switch for that's that quick pick up and play for a little bit and then move on with your life. 
There's also some challenge stages here too, where it's like, you know, how, how far can you get with these different types of challenges? Always, always fun. I didn't make it too far this time, but next time for sure. Contraptions 2 is the name of this game. Contraptions 2, tons of levels to choose from. And the idea is you have to put things in place and then when things go active, it defeats the stage for you. Not defeats it, but you know, it passes the stage for you. And then when it's in play, okay, there you go. Move on to the next stage, great. And different stages have other different obstacles and things that you can build and do. And then as soon as you hit the play button, you're like, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I, I, I know what I did wrong last time and I can fix it this time. And you know, kind of go from there. So kind of fun to have on the Switch as well. There were about three or four uh, slot machine games that all came out all at once. And the slot machine games, again, the perfect, just kind of like have it hanging around. Uh, I, I grabbed a celebrity one. <laughs> There's a couple other ones. Um, the celebrities are in no, you know, celebrity likeness thereof i mean there's kind of, there's you know kind of an ed sheeran looking guy kind of a was that a ryan gosling or something like that i don't know you can come up with who those celebrities are supposed to be um but it's it's a slot machine just nice and simple nice and simple slot machine in lieu of having something like this on your phone you already got your switch handy eh, why not grab this game for your switch these are just they're fine they're, i mean it's just you just kind of you just kind of watch it move and watch it go and you know, nothing, nothing wrong here. Good old slot machine. Panda's Village is an interesting one. I saw it at first and I was like, I don't know what to think of this, but I want to play it a little bit more. And when I played it a little bit more, I'm like, I still not sure. And then uh, the more I played it, the more I kind of got into it a little bit. And you'll see what I'm talking about uh, as you see this game progress here. So you have this villa and you're, you're building the villa. I'm going to show you just straight from the beginning of the game here. You start building this village uh, to pre protect the village of these uh, invading monkeys that are gonna be uh, popping in here pretty soon. And don't worry, it's not like, a t I mean, a little bit like tower defense, but there's also tower defense, but then you can also still be active in defeating the monkeys too. So it's not like, you're not just relying on only the towers to defend. You can defend too. The tower's gonna help though. But then sometimes they don't always help. And unfortunately you have a few attacks and everything that you can, you know, again, defeat these monkeys. That's the whole point of the game is to uh, protect the village from the monkeys, but you also have to build the village to protect the village. And that's what Panda's Village is all about. I'm about to see you hit that subscribe button because you can't get enough of these videos, I promise. What Switch games are you playing? Anything like new, retro, something like that? Let me know in the comments. I'm always down to check out new games. And I'll do another one of these videos as soon as I can. There's always new games coming out and always looking forward to it.